Be careful of who you are telling about your blessings. Proverbs 17, verses 27 to 28. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. What Proverbs 17, verse 27 tells us is that both wisdom and folly are often revealed by one's words. Yet, in the case of wisdom, it must be revealed by the knowledge of when to keep quiet. We should never think that the wise man or woman reveals their wisdom by talking a lot. A person with knowledge and wisdom knows when to talk or when to remain silent. If you want to retain your blessings or you want to live to enjoy your blessings, one of the key life skills you will need to acquire is knowing when to shut up. If you want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord in your life, Know what to say to people, when to say it, and whom you say it to. Don't go around telling everyone and their pets about what exactly God has blessed you with. Yes, indeed, we need to testify about the goodness of God, but you don't have to go into the ins and outs about all of those blessings. My parents are pastors, and I grew up in the church, and this story is a true story of people who I know personally. And I watched this story unfold with my very own eyes. A particular husband and wife were blessed by God, and they began a company where they would provide independent nurses to different hospitals and different retirement homes and care homes. Over the passage of time, God blessed this family, and as God blessed them, they began to attract more and more attention from people in the church, and even people in our local community. But this couple would not keep quiet about their business. Anytime the opportunity to speak about and boast about it, they would take the opportunity. They would detail everything about their business, how they got started, who their clients were, how much they charged them, and so on. And then over time, they started losing clients and business began going down. They were even struggling to break even. They lost over 70% of their clients. And when the husband met up with the clients, they all kept saying they found a new supplier, but they would not disclose who the supplier was. Until one day, the husband received a phone call from a client who had now become a close friend. This client told him he was contacted by another supplier who offered lower rates than him. He came to find out that a person who he had spoken to about his company at church had started the exact same company and was going after all their clients. This man had only joined the church to find out what this couple did, and then as soon as he had started his own business, he left the church, and he began targeting all of their clients. Some people that shouldn't even know your name know a lot about you because you keep telling them about your blessings. You have given yourself to your enemies through gossip. They tell you about their lives just for you to tell them about yourself, and then they will start working towards your destruction. Do you think they will praise God for your sake? Do you think they will be happy because you got what you have been praying for? Do you think they will celebrate with you? The fact that they appeared when you are celebrating doesn't mean they are celebrating with you. You need to open your eyes. You need to know who you are exposing yourself to. You need to know your surroundings and the people that are there. Don't be naive. Not everyone is happy for you. Unfortunately, that is the nature of the world we live in. Some people have invited problems into their lives, all in the name of sharing their testimonies. There are places you should never regard your testimony. There are some people you should never share them with. If you think this message is going to be teaching you to hate other people, then you are already having a wrong view of this message. If you think this message is to make you fight everyone around you, then you are already having a wrong view of this message. This message is telling you to be careful. The amount of people who put themselves in unnecessary pain because simply they could not shut up is disheartening. To be sincere, there are some blessings that you just can't keep to yourself. Some blessings will announce themselves without you saying anything to people. God knows how to give that kind of blessing because He is God and there is nothing too hard for Him. The truth is, most of the time, the blessings that God gives will announce themselves and people will know about it. Now, what do you do in this case? Just be alert. Because the truth about human nature is that when people see you going past them in life, some people are not happy about that. Joseph was blessed too, but they hated him for it. I am here to tell you to wake up. If you've been sleeping in the spirit, you need to wake up. If you have been doing the wrong things like gossiping and telling everyone about yourself, if you have been living without prayer, you need to wake up. Revelation 3 verse 2 Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. 
God is telling you to strengthen yourself. God has blessed you. And that doesn't mean it is time to sleep in the spirit. You need to wake up. You need to let your mind be up and running. This is a battlefield and you need to fight. The enemies are coming for that blessing you have. The enemies are coming for you. If they find you unguarded, they will rob you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is coming for you. I am not saying this to scare you, but he will surely come for you. It doesn't matter how big or small that blessing is, he will come for it. What he will do is set traps for you. And these traps, or two of the biggest traps Satan uses to destroy a believer's blessing, is sin and people. In the past we have spoken about sin destroying blessing, but today we are not talking about sin. We are talking about people. Samson was a blessed man. Judges 13 verse 24, And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Samson was a blessed man. He was a legendary Israelite warrior and judge, a member of the tribe of Dan and a Nazarite. His immense physical strength, which he used for 20 years against the Philistines, derived from his uncut hair. Samson then fell in love with a beautiful Philistine woman named Delilah. The rulers in Philistine came to Delilah and offered her money if she found out what made Samson so strong. Delilah went home and made a great meal for Samson and asked him what made him so strong. Samson responded that if he was tied up with seven new bowstrings that had not been dried, he would lose his strength. Delilah went and told the rulers who instructed her to tie up Samson in his sleep. To Delilah's surprise, Samson had tricked her and was able to break free. Samson told her again that he would lose his strength if he was tied up, but with bowstrings that had to be new and never used. Delilah again tried to trap Samson while he slept, but he was able to break free. Delilah was very hurt by Samson and questioned his love for her since he could not share his secret to his strength. The next day, Delilah asked Samson continually about his strength and bugged him so much that he finally told her the secret to his strength, that he was given his strength at birth by God and that if his hair was cut, he would lose his strength. That evening, as Samson slept, Delilah cut his hair and called in the Philistines. The Philistine men were able to capture Samson. They barged in, gouged his eyes out, and took him to prison in Gaza. If you are not filtering the people you are talking to or telling about your blessings, you are putting yourself in their pot of hot water to be boiled by them. Greater men and women than you have been burned by talking too much. Sometimes the best course of action is to shut up. Who are the people in your life right now? Are they supposed to be there? Who are the people you are telling about your success? Are they supposed to know about it? Who are those you are celebrating your blessings with? Are they supposed to know about it at all? Are you sure you are not making a mistake telling some people about your plans? Are you sure you are not making a mistake telling some people to help you with your plans? Are you sure you are not making a mistake telling some people to manage your success for you? You need to watch. If your business is growing, you need to be on the watch. If your marriage is getting blessed every day, you need to be on the watch. If your career is experiencing success all the time, you need to be on the watch. I will leave you with this story my wife told me. In her friendship group at university, one friend began dating a man who was extremely affluent. He didn't look wealthy, but he was extremely wealthy. And she told her friend about her boyfriend and about how rich he was and all the things he used to do for her and so on. But this friend kept telling her not to trust him and she kept feeding her all kinds of bad ideas about guys. They eventually broke up and to her amazement, that same friend then began dating that man later on. There are people who are secretly fighting you. There are people who want to make sure that you squander that blessing and you cry later. Sometimes wisdom is in being silent. Sometimes wisdom shows when you shut up.